Uh, Mays Landing is steeped in history. Uh, it, it starts somewhere around the, the late 1600s. The uh, first attempt at a railroad came from Egg Harbor City directly to Mays Landing, running north and south, um, and it, it connected to our wharf, and it was used to export goods and so forth out of here. Uh, the second railroad uh, that came in 1880 was the West Jersey and Atlantic. It connected Camden with Atlantic City through Mays Landing. At that time, we had a large cotton mill here, so the railroad was connected to the cotton mill and also was used to bring the workers to work and to ship in bats of cotton from down south. The 1800s saw the boom of our industrial revolution and steam engines uh, were the first type of locomotive used to power the train. The type of railroad would consist of a couple passenger cars and then they would have freight cars attached. Atlantic City was in its uh, infancy of having being a tourist attraction, so uh, railroad excursions were popular. Well, in June of 1880, the first uh, trains were rolling out of Philadelphia to Atlantic City. Um, that summer, a 1,400 uh, passenger list out of Philadelphia, which was uh, the St. Anne's Parish and um, neighboring parishes, chartered the train. It was an excursion to Atlantic City for the day. They left early in the morning. Uh, two trains left out of Camden. Uh, the day went fine. It was a little overcast and became, you know, increasingly the weather got worse. Um, but when they went to leave at six o'clock, that's when the, the skies opened up. So it was a terrible, terrible rainstorm. They hit May's Landing about 625. And now at the same time, because there's just one track that leads from Philadelphia to Atlantic City, a down express was coming eastbound to Atlantic City while these guys were heading back to Philly. So they had to pull over to the siding which um, is 2,600 feet. Um, at that point, um, the first train, because it had extra cars on it, couldn't pull over far enough. So it left two cars on the track. When the other was coming up behind it, it couldn't slow down fast enough, and it slammed into the back of that first train. The second locomotive after being stuck into the back of the car for a while and the, the engine not working, the steam built up and the engine exploded. That sent steam through the cars like a, like a pipe and it, it trapped and basically scalded a lot of people right in their seats. Some of the people did open the windows and jump to safety. Some of them landed on the ground, some of them landed in the river, and some of them landed in swamp. So the initial uh, death was uh, Thomas Sweeney who had been standing on the platform on the back of that first train and he got crushed. Subsequent fatalities were a result of the scalding water and the steam from the locomotive. Um, they came, the water came rushing in at 200 degrees and uh, most, most of the passengers in that last car if they didn't die from their injuries, they were terribly, you know, mean for life. We know there was definitely 27 fatalities. Um, at this point, it looks like there's probably between 50 and 60 injured. And then we had three missing and two were uh, two little sisters that they never found. The Historical Society every year sponsors what they call a ghost walk. We have some spots in town that um, have had some spooky history attached to them. And we, we go to different houses and points in town where um, there were tragedies or where something happened and the guy would explain that. Uh, this year, Mari was running the uh, ghost walk and she decided to add one of our old train stations to the, the walk that, you know, that would make it a tour stop. Well, I thought part of uh, the fun to bring in a, a younger generation, um, a lot of uh, people these days are into the sci-fi channel and paranormal investigations. Um, I knew that uh, just the week before our ghost walk, there was going to be a presentation down in Cape May by the White Raven Investigations. 
um, what I found it fascinating and at the end of the presentation I talked to John um, asked him if he'd be interested in participating in our ghost walk and the whole team was excited so the White Raven team did uncover some paranormal activity it was a residual haunt they did see the spike in uh, their devices that night I was presented with the first article that had come out of the New York Times and I was just uh, I was shocked that an event that had happened here would have been covered by a big New York paper and as I dug further into the story I found out you know we were talking about 27 people that had gotten killed so knowing that it was St. Anne's Parish the first thing I did was to check and see if there's anything left for St. Anne's Parish. They didn't keep like a journal of it. Uh, there's records, of course, of names, but that's, um, there's no description of the wreck that we can find in their records. I was kind of surprised. I thought that maybe they would at least have a memorial service on the anniversary every year, or in some way have a plaque on the wall or something that would relate to that. So the most interesting connection was that the bishop was actually the uncle of the owner of the cotton mill and the railroad. Locating living relatives um, is an important part of any research. Um, they're, they're not from this area, so most of the, the uh, people on the train, the passengers were all from the Philly area. The research involved in that um, involves a little bit of genealogy and at the same time a lot of reading old newspapers. I was able to find that somewhere, apparently, a telegraph went out to like the, what's equivalent to the Associated Press. And so cities all over the country were sharing the story in detail. Ironically, it wasn't being shared in New Jersey. I haven't located one local paper, one county paper, one state paper. Um, it, it was really, you know, at that point, it was really looking pretty fishy. Um, I couldn't really put my finger on why. Why wouldn't we have shared that? Um, and if it, it is a cover-up, like, you're talking about a, a lot of people that would be involved that would have to be silenced, you know, with a news piece as big as that was. We are looking into this right now. I don't even think there was a National uh, Safety and Transportation Bureau at that time, the NSTB. Um, they would have been investigating this. It, it, from what we found, the railroad investigated itself. And the cotton mill in Mays Landing was owned by a prominent family in South Jersey. Um, and they actually were the same family that brought the railroad into the area and most all of the jury consisted of men who either worked directly for that cotton mill or had family that worked for that cotton mill. The verdict came back two days later with um, not finding anybody responsible. It was just went down as an accident. Um, that's when, you know, things started making sense at that point. We were at the New Jersey State Archives in Trenton. Um, there's a published book that's called the Railroad and Canal Report. That's a requirement that at the end of the year, each year, every railroad company, every canal owner, and, and there's also bridges involved in it, has to make a report to the state assembly, uh, not only of their finances, but um, of any major accidents, uh, of course, any loss of life, and, and any um, disruption in service, basically, is what it comes down to. And the, the big aha moment for me is I've used these several times before in my research. This wreck was not recorded in its proper place. I don't know of another circumstance where their dates were moved or changed. What happened was the West Jersey did file at the beginning of their report for the following year, 1881, which means that that would not have come out until you know, January, February of 1882. So it was one to two years, one, one and a half years late from the accident where they did record the accident. The National Railroad Historical Society, the West Jersey Chapter Historical Society, the Pennsylvania Railroad Museum, 
nobody had any of this on record. So we're continuing the research, uh, we're still uncovering more evidence, and it is a story that needs to be told.